we're gonna talk about tension. What's tension? One more than nine shin. Get it? Cause tension and nine sh that's okay, I'll um because I Tension is the force that we usually talk about when we think about pulling a rope or a chain or something like that, because you know the old expression, you can't push a rope. But today we are gonna push a rope. I have a rope right here, and I'm going to push it using another force called flexion. I've got some pieces of plastic here, and they bend or flex, and when they do, they wanna spring back, but I'm gonna prevent them from springing back by putting them in between these knots. Huh? And look, the rope now stays up. I take another piece and I stick it on this knot and then I bend it all the way. This is not terrifying. Really, it's not terrifying at all. Oh, okay, okay. And then I take this piece and I put it here and I bend it around and... <gasps> So now we have a rope that's being pushed and we're defying gravity and we're making a cool art sculpture. All right, one more here. Ooh, okay, here we go. And, and flexing. And, whoa. Ha ha! There you go, I've pushed a rope, defied gravity, and made a cool art sculpture. Okay, well, I guess technically I haven't really pushed the rope because we're still pulling from each knot. And I guess I haven't really defied gravity because that one's sitting on the table and all the others are sitting on top of that. But you can't argue that I made a cool art sculpture. Ha <laughs> Art, I mean, science. Inertia, what is it? Well, it's directly related to Newton's first law of motion. An object in motion tends to stay in motion, an object at rest tends to stay at rest. Let's do an experiment. Here is an object. Right now, it's at rest. You might think that means it has no inertia, but that's not true. Inertia just means an object's tendency to keep doing what it is doing. Right now, it's doing nothing. But if I wanted to overcome its inertia, I would have to put energy in. And now that I have, it is moving on its own. It has inertia. If I wanted to stop it, I would have to overcome its inertia, its tendency to keep moving. There. I went exactly that far. Now, let's max it out. I'm adding uh, uh, these weights to the cart. Now it has a lot more mass which means it has a lot more inertia and its tendency to do nothing. But this time it has a lot more inertia. If I wanted to get it going the same speed as before, I'd have to put in a lot more effort. There, now it's going the same speed as before, but now it has way more inertia, so stopping it will be harder. So there you go, inertia, a thing's tendency to stay moving or stay still, and the more mass, the more inertia. <sighs> what we're gonna do is build this. This is the mousetrap boat, and it works like this. I've got the mousetrap, and it's attached to a long arm. That arm has a string on it, and it goes around the paddle wheel, and as the mousetrap unwinds, the paddle wheel spins like that, which pushes the boat forward. Now, it looks kind of complicated, but it's actually quite simple to make, and here's what you need. My mousetrap boat is made with styrofoam, craft sticks, and elastics. You'll also want a pencil, plastic drink caps, a shish kebab skewer, small zip ties, string, and of course, your mousetrap. Now, mousetraps can hurt your fingers, so get an adult to help you when you use it. Start with two pieces of styrofoam. I like to cut mine into this shape, but the only really important thing is that they're the same size. Your paddle wheel is made from a circle of styrofoam with a pencil through the middle, and it will go across like this. To make the paddle wheel, I use cut pieces of craft stick, or they can be plastic, and make some cuts and then put them in like this, and that is what will make your paddles on the paddle wheel, because that's the wheel and that's the paddle. Paddle wheel, <laughs> that's why they call it that. Stick drink caps to the ends of the pencil after sticking it through the styrofoam. 
I like to use a few craft sticks and elastics to help give the styrofoam strength. Next is the mouse trap, which you want to glue down to a frame of four craft sticks. Attach the frame to the boat with elastics, then attach the shish kebab skewer or a pencil to the mouse trap with zip ties. I like to put some craft sticks on the end to make it easier to tie the string to it. Wrap the other end around the paddle wheel pencil, and remember you need enough string so that your stick can lie flat. Okay, let's try it out. Wind up the paddle wheel. This will be a little hard as the spring will pull back, but that's where you're storing the energy. And when it's wound up, put it in the water and let it go. The paddle wheel turns because the mouse trap is transferring energy that we put in earlier, and it goes all the way. We stored the energy in the tension of the spring. Now that tension is pulling the mouse trap, the stick, and the string, which turns the paddle wheel and makes the boat go. Mouse trap powered boat! If you want more detailed instructions or other designs, look up mouse trap boat. And there you have it, the mouse trap powered paddle wheel boat. Well, hello science maximites today we are going to be flying on science max experiments at large take a look at this it's my paper airplane give her a bit of a throw and she flies amazing now take a look at this this one is lighter than air it's a helium balloon and guess what it flies on its own see you later well just hold on a second there friend what's this what you might call it called i'll tell you it's called a hoop glider give it a toss and she flies really well but today we're flying in a whole new way science maximites i know it sounds like we've covered all the bases for flying but we haven't come on follow me oh didn't actually realize how much these goggles would fog up um where was i oh right we're flying today on science max come on Today, we're going to be building a tumble wing. That's a kind of paper airplane that flies on a cushion of air. This is a big mouth tumble wing. It doesn't look like much because, well, it's not. It's just two strips of paper taped at either end. But what you do is you throw it in the air and you walk along behind it with a hard surface like this. And that little scoop of air keeps it flying. And here's how you can make a tumble wing of your own. But first, a word about paper. Did you know that paper comes in different weights? The kind of paper you get from the printer is actually pretty heavy. The ideal paper to use for tumblewing making is from a phone book. You may not have a phone book at home. They're kind of rare right now. But its paper is very, very thin and the perfect for tumblewing flying. Now, if you don't have a phone book around, you can use newspaper. It works almost as well. What you do is you cut out some strips of paper and you just need two, and you put them on top of each other, and then you offset them, which means you take the top one and you slide it over till there's about maybe a centimeter, two centimeters, something like that. And then you take your handy dandy science tape, which is the same as regular tape, except you use this tape only for science. And you tape the edges very carefully like that and flip it over to the other side, make a little tape on this side, just like that, and there you go. You have a big mouth tumbleweed. Now you also want to tweak it just like you do with a paper airplane. You want to curl the paper a little bit, curl this side a little bit, and let's see how it flies. You'll know you have it right when it doesn't go to the left or right, but just opens up and tumbles straight down. Ah, not too bad. That one curved a little bit, so I'll have to tweak it a little more. Now, the other thing you're gonna need is a nice hard surface. The kind of signs that you get when there's an election are perfect. I happen to have a few of these sitting around, and they are made of something called corrugated plastic. They're very light, but they're also very hard. So you can use this, but you can also use cardboard if you don't have any of these around. So what you wanna do is get your tumbleweed and your hard surface and flip it in the air, get it flying very nicely, and then walk behind it with your board and a scoop of air will be behind it and it will fly. But it may look easy when I do it, but that's because I've been practicing quite a bit. So here are some tips for tumblewing flying. Tumblewing flying tips. When flying your tumblewing, you want to be indoors, away from any wind or other kinds of moving air. A long hallway or a big room is best so you don't run out of space. The angle you hold your board is important. Too much tilt or too little and it won't work. Keeping your tumblewing in the air is mostly about the speed that you walk. Too fast and the tumblewing will go over the top, too slow and it'll fall. Finally, practice, practice, practice. <laughs> 